What's up guys and welcome. You are watching Fancy Fitness. So let's start today's video with Flex Pro Italy scorecards. So Nathan Diesha surely would be massively disappointed after watching this scorecard because Barros Tabani got unanimous scores, which is kind of surprising because almost all of us who saw this show, they were of the opinion that this show was extremely close, especially that gap between first and second place. That seemed like it would be extremely close, but apparently that wasn't the case. So this is now the second time Barros Tabani has been able to beat Nathan Diesha very comfortably. And you know what? These two guys are going to be competing against each other in a little more than 4 weeks time at one of the biggest shows of the year, Dubai Pro. And if Barros Tabani is able to beat Nathan Diesha here at his very best, I have no idea what Nathan Diesha and his team can do differently for this upcoming Dubai Pro. Especially if Barros brings that kind of similar package. And the thing is, we all know how consistent Barros is especially when it comes to his PK. I guess the only thing that Nathan can do is try not to be that much full where his waistline appears bigger, especially in comparison to Barros. I'm not saying Nathan's waistline is big. It's just that Barros's waistline was extremely small. And that was probably a major point in almost all of the front shots where Barros was able to expose him. So what do you guys think about the scores? Can Nathan beat William Barnack in Portugal? And William Barnack is a guy who was just able to beat Barros Tabani in Spain. So in a way, Nathan Diesha finds himself in kind of a difficult scenario because Barnack just beat Barros and Barros was able to beat Nathan. So in that way, Nathan might not even be able to win one pro show this year. So next up, we have the latest physique update from Muhammad Fada. So I don't think he has announced just yet what show he is going for. So according to who is the best bodybuilder Instagram page, he is doing Chicago Pro, which means he is a little more than 4 weeks out of the show. So I have to say something needs to be said about those quads. Absolutely mind blowing from the front as well as from the side. He wants to step on the Olympia stage this year and he has all the tools to do that. Great overall V tipper with such a small and tiny waist. So that combined with those bubbly quads, I think he is gonna be a force to be reckoned with in the future. So the difference with Fada this year is the change of his coach. Previously, he was working with Hani Rembot. But this year, he has been working with Stefan. And we have seen how Stefan has been able to bring his athletes not only shredded, but he peaks them in a way where they are in a phenomenal condition. Plus the fullness, the hardness, everything is there. Just take a look at the peak of William Barnack. He was not only shredded, but very round and very full. That enabled him to win in Spain. Personally, I believe Fada has one of the most impressive physiques that hasn't reached his full potential just yet. But the way he has been looking in these past few months, he is almost there. He is gonna be a great bodybuilder to look forward to in the future. The guy is very young, he's hungry, and this is exactly the type of look that the judges are rewarding in this current era. That taper down waistline with those huge thick laps and huge quads. So I believe this guy is gonna turn a lot of heads very soon. Next up, we have a 16 weeks off physique update of the reigning 212 champ, Keon Pearson. So this is one of the best fundable biceps in the IB Pro League right now. Many athletes can hide their wide waist in the front double by doing a vacuum. But if your waist looks super small and tiny doing a front large spread, like Keon's waist, then you are truly gifted in that department. As you guys can see it right here. The proportions on this guy are just absolutely nuts. And it is so unbelievable how Kion has been able to put on so much muscle, so much quality mass since he made his transformation from classic to the 212 division. And his waistline hasn't even changed one bit. In fact, I have to say his overall V-taper looks even better now compared to what it looked like in classic physique. And I believe this year in October, we are going to see a totally new and improved version of Kion because his quads have came up a lot. And that's only gonna enhance his V-taper even more than before. So there isn't a slightest doubt in Kion's mind that he is gonna win as the champ of the 2 drill division for years to come. And if that shape is looking so deadly at 16 weeks out, we cannot even imagine what the final look of Kion Pearson is gonna be like when he steps on stage in October. Now since we are talking about the 212, if you look at the average training update from the former 212 champ, Sean Carrida, who we all know is gonna be the biggest threat to Kion this year. He is using that hashtag, take back season. So Sean and his coach Matt Jensen know that this might very well be their last chance, their last shot at winning the Olympia title again. 
because the thing is, Sean Carrida is going to be turning 42 years old this year. And although there hasn't been any signs of injury, any signs of him slowing down, he's still throwing around those big weights like it's nothing. But we have to take into account the fact that he had a 10 plus years pro career already. And most of these guys start to go downhill as they cross 40, even though that hasn't been the case with Sean so far. But sooner or later, that age factor catches up to you. So it is going to be interesting to see these guys battle it out. So here is the real question. Can Sean beat this new version of Keon? Even if he brings back that 222 look. My personal opinion is that if Keon is able to bring that same condition as he did last year with the added size and the improvements that he has made in the hamstrings, in the glutes and in his back, I think he's going to be unbeatable. But do let me know what you guys think. Let's talk about Esteban Bravo, the winner of South Florida Classic or otherwise known as CH Saudi Classic, which happened last night. So this guy is going to be a good addition to the 212 Olympia lineup. So it was one of the most confusing callouts by the judges last night because they did a separate two-man callout with Mike and Cody. Little did these guys know that the judges had Esteban in the solid first place and those guys were fighting for the number two and number three. So if we look at some of the comparisons, Esteban was just way too big and muscular for these guys. So here is another guy in the 212 class who is full as a house. Really massive. Plus he can pull off a really good vacuum and also who has the ability to get in that great condition as well. So we definitely need more physiques like this in the 212 division to make it more exciting. We saw Christian Zagarala getting his Olympia qualification in Toronto Pro just two weeks ago. And interestingly, Esteban was the guy who was runner up at that show. And here he was able to punch his ticket to the Olympia. So both these guys have incredible physiques and they're both going to be making their Olympia debuts in October this year. So the future of 212 is looking really great. The reigning Arnold Classic Ohio and UK champion, Vassi Wieser start his Olympia prep at exactly 16 weeks out of the show. So this is the peak of his offseason and he has been looking the biggest and the leanest he has ever been. And this might very well be the most crucial bodybuilding show of his entire professional career. Because it wasn't like an overnight success for Wesley. It took him a lot of time to be in this position. Because when he first came onto the pro scene, he had a major fan base, and many thought he will be the one who was gonna challenge Chris Bumpstead for the title. But if we just look back at some of his looks up until 2020, he wasn't even placing top 10 at the Olympia level. In fact, in 2018, Rusty was unable to place at the Olympia. His waistline looked very blocky, especially in comparison to all these other top guys. And if I'm not mistaken, he was coaching himself during that period. But it has been a total turnaround for Wesley, especially in 2024, where he is entering this year's Mr. Olympia as a legitimate title contender. So do let me know what you guys think. Can he beat Ramondino once again? Can he challenge Chris Bumstead? And also hit the thumbs up button if you liked the video. And smash the subscribe button if you wanna come back for more. Thanks for watching.